Hello friends and welcome back to RC with Adam. In this video we are going to do three things. I'm going to introduce you to the Quick Mount, the world's best and fastest 3D printable camera mount. Then we're going to take a look at the design history, don't worry it won't take too long, of this mount and how it came to be for all of my designer friends out there. And then we're going to take a look at a prototype that I got from PCB Way, who is the sponsor of this video. And uh, I haven't looked at this yet, so it will be a surprise for both of us. We'll see what these prototypes of this model actually look like and talk more about that process. Let's get started. This is the quick mount. If you're like me, you have a lot of cameras and because you know you're a super successful YouTuber or something, but you don't want to pay a bunch of money for a, a ton of quick attach camera plates, you know, made out of aluminum and stuff that are made for, you know, heavier cameras that are used by people who are more professional than you are. So you have a 3D printer, so what do you do? Well, you can print this guy right here. I'm very proud of this mount. I designed it myself. It took quite a while. It's not perfect, but we'll talk about that later. So it consists of three main parts. You have the bottom plate, which is the largest part. You have the lever lock right here. And then you have the camera plate, the part that actually attaches to the camera. This is relatively very easy to print and uses minimal hardware. Mainly you're going to need a quarter 20 screw to attach the camera plate to the camera. And then you're going to need an M3 screw to attach the lever lock. Now there is another part to this, which is actually a little 3D printed quarter 20 threaded kind of a nut insert right here. And it just sits right in the middle of the bottom plate and it just pops in place right there and so that will give you enough threaded grip um, and it is quite strong but you know this is not going to be uh, cinema quality you might say but if you have lightweight cameras you should be fine here's a quarter for scale you can see it's uh, large enough to be functional and durable but not so large that it is all bulky and gets in the way and it's just excess stuff to print and when it locks up it locks up nice and tight now that will depend a little bit on how you actually print it but in this case it it locks up very very nicely and you can play around with that if you need to and hey, if you don't like to use a camera, you can also mount GoPros or phones and any other type of mounts on here. So you just have your quarter 20, you thread it you know, through like you would normally do, and it will lock in place. So this way you can easily print an extra camera plate and stick it in there, lock it in place, bing, bang, boom, you're ready to go. Now, for the actual camera plate... Another important design factor is that I made it so that you can use these little D-ring style screws for the camera. This way the cutout is large enough for the D-ring to sit flush. Now if you're wondering where you can get the files to print your own quick mount, check the description below for a link to it on my website. Now at this point, I know what you're thinking. Adam, this is a bloody brilliant design. You must be a genius for coming up with this on your first try. And as much as I agree with you, it actually was not my first try. In fact, I went through 11 different iterations before I landed on this one, which is basically the public version number one. So I thought it would be fun to give you some backstory of how I came to this design and the motivation and inspiration behind it. Like I said, a big factor for me was the cost. I wanted a way of making my own camera plates to save money. I did find some 3D printable designs from other designers, but I just really didn't like it, really didn't work for me. Here's one, I think uh, this is from Architects 3DP, not throwing them under the bus, just saying this design didn't really work for me. It's just too bulky, has sharp edges. There's gotta be something better. So let's get to work on designing it. So here is my very first design. It's kind of hard to see because I printed this with clear PLA, but you can see what I tried to do is actually mimic the Joby uh, like Gorillapod camera mount plate. And my idea was to make this interchangeable because that's that at the time that was what I was using. We have this little opening in the front to clip into the Joby mounting system. And then we have the back is kind of this curved, uh, sort of like how it is now, but with very, very minimal sloping. And then the camera plate itself is very large um, and very sloppy. It just wiggles around. It's not very good. This locking, uh, this locking lever is just 
doesn't really lock it very well. So this was this the very beginning. So then I said, well, hey, we can uh, do away with these uh, kind of raised pieces on the camera bottom plate on the bottom plate. And we can put in kind of like this little, like a little tab thing, like a little protrusion. Well, the protrusion came out and it didn't work out very well. And then we have this lever lock, which turns out with this lever lock, you can actually just push on the lock and it will roll open. Okay, let's put like a little toe kicker thing to capture the front of the camera plate. And that worked out a lot better. And I kind of kept that design all the way through. Still trying to get the geometry right. In this case, we have too much of a slope on our locking mechanism. I said, okay, let's keep that basic design, but uh, we'll kind of change up the, the geometry of the locking lever. And we have, honestly, a pretty decent design here. And we're still, you know, keeping the same Joby form factor. So this actually wasn't too bad, but it could definitely be improved. So the next version, so this is when I started adding this little uh, V-lock channel into the camera plate and the locking lever. And then at this point for the camera plate, you can see I have this sort of uh, rounded shape for the quarter 20 screw. So this one still didn't work out very well. And at this point I said, you know what, this is kind of dumb to be trying to replicate the Joby mount because honestly it's not a very good mount and uh, I don't like it. And so that so that's why I got rid of that, fir that front locking part. I said, you know what, we don't need this anymore. I'm just going to make my own design and it will just be my own proprietary design and I'll just use it for all of my cameras and stuff. And that is when we come to this one. Version six, I totally changed up the shape so we no longer have the long, narrow shape. We have this more rounded kind of shape. And I still kept that sort of a foot box right there for the little toe of the camera plate to sit in. Kept the V-lock design. Honestly, this one is pretty good. We have a much more solid lockup. From design number six to design number seven, not a ton of changes, but definitely changes to the floor plate. Uh, the bottom plate because we decided I decided to just raise the edge all the way around the bottom plate so now that's it's taller just below the camera locking plate so from the x7 design we have the x8 and this is when I made it larger like noticeably larger I can't remember how much larger but it's it's larger uh, because the x7 was just a little bit too small it was hard to work with all of the um, with the thumb screws and everything. So you can see it's definitely a larger footprint. So then we move over to the X9 or version nine. This one still has the, the through bolt design. Now with version nine, I decided to add a little bit of a chamfer um, around the whole front edge of the bottom plate, as well as the bottom of the bottom plate. I've changed the lock geometry just a little bit, but it's kind of hard to tell. Iterations 10 and 11 are pretty similar to this, but I don't have examples for those. And finally, eventually we get to the X12 or version 12, which is basically the final version one. Here you can see we have more chamfering around the front edge, which I think gives it a much sleeker design um, and around the bottom as well. It, it takes away those sharp edges and it's easier to print and looks better, it feels better. Also, I decided not to go with the through bolt design for the lever lock handle. Instead, it just goes through the bottom plate and that is a countersunk screw, and then it goes into the lever. This way, uh, while we do lose some strength of having that through bolt design, we get this really nice smooth finish on the top, which personally I just really like a lot. And I, I think we maintain plenty of, uh, yeah. And I think we maintain plenty of strength for this intended purpose. I've also improved the lock geometry for this V-notch, as well as some of the geometry on the lever and the handle itself, kind of all around, but it's kind of hard to spot. A lot of these changes that I made to this version are not something you would necessarily see or notice, but come into play when you're actually trying to print and assemble this. Finally, I added a logo to the bottom. So there you have a brief history of how we got to where we are now with the quick mount. But I says to myself, wouldn't it be neat to try this in different materials, materials that I can't print with right now with the 3D printing technology that I have at my disposal. And that's where PCBWay comes in because PCBWay 
offers rapid prototyping as well as electronic uh, circuit board, uh, printed circuit board design. So you can actually get custom printed circuit boards. Go check them out, link in the description and all that sort of stuff. But they've been sponsoring my videos uh, for a little while now. And I said, well, shoot, that's a perfect time uh, to use their prototyping ability and order some of these parts uh, in different 3D printed materials with different types of 3D uh, printing manufacturing methods. So let's take a look at what's in here. I have not looked at this closely. So you and I are going to look at this together. And uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I've ordered all three components. The, the nut was too small actually. Um, it was just kind of like a too small of an item for them to print, or at least with the method that I had selected. But I got the camera plate, the base plate, and the lever locks, and apparently they sent me two. So I don't know if that was just a mistake, but I'm happy to have two, so thank you, PCBWay. All right, let's open these babies up and take a closer look at them. Um, honestly, like, this is not just because I sponsored the video. This really actually came way faster than I thought it would. It came, like well within two weeks of ordering it i want to say it was like a week later uh via dhl i believe really good shipping time especially nowadays with everything that's going on oh this is awesome oh my gosh so i got the camera plate printed in metal and uh it's heavy oh i like it whoa whoa now the question is will these parts actually Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This, these are weird materials to go together. I know like this is not really like necessarily the most ideal materials, but I wanted to order some different types to try them out. The base plate was resin printed in nylon HP PA 12 and cost $19. The camera plate was SLM printed with aluminum and it was the most expensive piece at $46 and the lever lock was SLS resin printed in nylon glass fiber. It costs $22. And taking a closer look at the base plate here, really the only issues that I can see are the kind of jagged edges towards the, uh, where the edges get thin on the side walls of the, where the camera plate sits. So kind of jagged, not very pretty edges right there. Otherwise, the detail looks pretty good. We've got the quick mount logo right there. It's a very, uh, very interesting feel. It's like a, um, feels like a, like almost like a fibrous kind of natural texture or almost, almost chalky in a way. It's hard to describe. Um, it kind of feels like, uh, like micarta or something along those lines. For the camera plate printed in aluminum, it's uh, it's not very smooth, so it's like a very much a matte kind of, almost rough texture. Um, it looks looks like we got a decent amount of detail, kind of kind of rough towards the front right there. Um, I mean rough in texture and also shape, a little bit of a shape defect, right on the front right there. Otherwise, looks pretty good. It look, I mean it looks functional. Um, it could be a little bit smoother right there on the inside of that V channel. And it's pretty heavy. It's not like, uh, not as light as it would be when you think of aluminum, but otherwise super cool. Like just, this is my first time actually holding an aluminum 3d printed part or a, a metal 3d printed part. And let's take a look at the lock. Also a rather rough texture. Yeah, quite rough, quite a uh, matte finish. You could definitely use some, some smoothing, probably where the lock is especially, although that part actually feels pretty smooth. Um, we'll see how well the threads can grip into this material. All right, let's try putting this thing together. Let's see how it goes in here. So let's get an M3 screw. This is a M3 by 10 millimeter screw. It's a countersunk. And we will first put it through this part. Ooh, look at that, nice. And this hole is, is made to be slightly oversized so that we get less friction right there. And then we need to put it through our lock or into our lock. Let's see if it even, because I was thinking this material might just be too hard and it might not grip. So I'm gonna put quite a bit of pressure in there. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, it's gripping. Got It takes a bit of pressure because 
the the threads basically have to cut into the material because it is not threaded uh, for the threads because they're so small. It wouldn't be really feasible to 3D print that small of threads. So we're going to just tighten it in here and see what happens. We are we actually have a ways to go. There we go. Starting to get tight. We want it we want it just just tight enough. It doesn't have to be really really tight. Okay? And then let's put our that part in. It goes in very nicely. Oh my gosh, it works. It actually works. This is not a great mate, mating surface right here because we have metal on nylon, but I'll be danged. Wow, that looks cool too. All right, let's try this out on an actual camera. Get off this old piece of junk, boring plastic 3D printed one. Get out of here. Ooh, ooh. Now in this case, the rough surface is actually, I think, an advantage because it keeps it from slipping around once you uh, tighten it down. Tighten it, kind of tuck the D-ring away. We get that on there and then we just slide this baby in. Oh, bam, and then, oh my gosh. That is, I just think the colors are just so weird and like, you know, kind of prototype looking. It looks cool. I love that. I'm geeking out about this stuff here, but it's just really cool to see your design like brought to life in a different construction method than what I've been using. So it's, it's really cool. Wow, 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 wow. Again, PCBWay is the sponsor of this video, so definitely go check them out if you need some custom printed circuit boards, electronic components, uh, or in this case, uh, some 3D printing and other methods of rapid prototyping. Now, let me tell you, they are sponsoring this video, but they have not paid me to say anything good about them. But I will say that the uh, experience so far with this prototyping process has just been like, super great like super flawless i uploaded the stl files and then got a really quick like estimate of the cost but keep in mind if you have special surface finishes or other things that you want to add on to this that they'll take into account in the final quote that could really raise the price like i was going to put some surface finishes on these parts but it would have cost almost three times as much getting sandblasted or having it painted or something like that. So do keep that in mind. Very cool, very good experience so far. And there you have it, folks. That has been the quick mount. Now you know what it is, the inspiration, the design behind it, and a little experiment with PCBWay's prototyping services. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want the quick mount, go check it out on my website, rcwithadam.com, and I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. And you can see a lot more instructions and photos and all kinds of stuff like that. Also, be sure to check out PCB Way, link in the description. Thanks for watching, everybody. Keep creating, keep making stuff, keep flying, and I will see you again on the next one. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our 